let's ha let's talk about your party and the direction. I'm really interested in your view because Peter Dutton, um, seemingly through a lot of his personal will, has gone for a blanket no on the Indigenous voice to Parliament. So a no vote from the party rather than a free vote or even here's what we need to change before supporting an aspect of it. Without delving right into the, you know, legal questions and so on, is this a risk for him that he's going to be defined by saying no on this when voters are still getting to know him and the Liberal Party still wants to lure more progressive voters back? Uh, well, look, life's a risk, Tom, um, and there's no doubt that all these calculations are risky. Um, I don't think it's been a blanket no. I think that they've agreed to recognition in the preamble of the Constitution, so they are trying to make some steps forward. Yes, that's I, true. I was just talking about the yeah, Indigenous voice, voice um, yeah. enshrining look, that. Yeah. Look, there's, there, there's no doubt in what I'd probably call post-materialist electorates, so electorates like um, Brisbane and Ryan and Kuyong and uh, Higgins... Um, and Curtin in the West, um, what you're going to find is that people are increasingly interested in governments that um, provide communities and countries that um, are bringing about the sort of values that they want to live. So it's not good enough to say we want a strong economy. You've got to be saying we need a strong economy as a means to an end. And I think the value that's at play here is um, a united Australia is a, an Australia that's reconciled with its past so that it can look forward to its future. And I think the important mm. part here is not that we've said no, but what we're going to put in its, in its place. And I think that's what comes next for um, Peter and his team. Right. So there needs to be a, a clearer outline. And because the Liberal Party, it should be pointed out, is still saying it supports local voices and legislating rather than putting in the Constitution, but there needs to be more talk of that alternative rather than a determination just to have the referendum fail. Because if you're talking about those electorates, and let's put McKellar in that as well, if I may, your former electorate, otherwise they're going to be harder to win, those now teal electorates, aren't they? Yeah, so if um, post-materialist um, electorates, like, like the one I used to represent... Um, and, and I'm a member of that community and I grew up there and all that and all of that. So I, I, I feel I understand the community I live in pretty well. Um, they are increasingly interested in what sort of values this country represents. And I think the biggest problem for the Liberal Party in the 1990s and the first part of the 21st century and something that we haven't dealt with, like we keep talking about, you know, what technology, what websites, you know, you have Cosmaris out there every day giving us advice, I'm sure well-meaning. But the, the real issue is that we have become defined solely by economic management. And in post-materialist electorates, that's not good enough. The economy is seen as a means to an end. And let's be quite clear, mm. um, liberalism in, the, in, the, in modern history has been the one philosophy that has driven um, societies forward. So it's not like we have to reinvent um, the philosophy of liberalism across a whole range of policy issues. It's the one thing that has always seen our societies go forward and empowered more people, um, given people more opportunities. Right. So when it comes to the voice or Aboriginal affairs generally, it's got to be we, we are the philosophy of reconciliation. We are the philosophy that seeks to bring people together. So what policies do we have to achieve that? And if our alternatives are better yeah. than a constitutional enshrined voice, then I think people will... They may not accept our alternative as a better policy, but at least they'll understand yeah. that we do value reconciliation. Well, well, very briefly, though, we're nearly out of time, but is it almost like your economic policies are not being seen or spoken about right now because you fail at the first hurdle for some voters on other issues that are smaller for voters but are an easier talking point. It might be something like The Voice. It might even be the attention Catherine Deeb's got on, on transgender issues and it looks like she's not, well, she's not running for the Senate now, but that was a big distraction last election. Yeah, look, I, I think that um, that's a really complex question. I'll try to keep it short, but when you look no, at... I've got 30 seconds for all that complexity and I apologise <laughs> yeah. in advance. No, no, that's right. Um, household savings um, under... Scott Morrison went from $77 billion to $355 billion. That's still washing out of the system. People don't see economic management as critical at the moment because the economy is not something that they're yet 
worried about or feeling, more importantly. But when we do talk about the economy and economic management, we need to put it in the context of what we intend to achieve with economic policy. Yeah, OK. All right. We're a bit truncated, but um, we'll talk again in a fortnight when you can... Uh Bash Patrick Coleman figuratively. As soon as, uh, over the as, head soon as Patrick gets his power back, absolutely.